Here we go. What's up, everybody? Welcome back. This is the best. We just actually got voted the best podcast of all time in fitness. We took a a, a poll here in the studio, and uh, it was a three people voted it the best. One said it wasn't the best. Doug, for some reason, he's a jerk. But anyway, we're the best. Thanks for coming. Also, here's the giveaway, right? Right now, one of you lucky viewers will get free access to MAPS Performance. This is a great program for people who don't just want to look good. They want to move well as well. They want to move like an athlete. They like functional strength. Functional endurance, explosive power. So that's the free program. Here's how you can enter to win. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications. Do all those things. And then if we pick your comment, we'll notify you and you'll get free lifetime access to that incredible program. Also, that program is on sale right now. It's 50% off. You can get it at mapsgreen.com and use the code FEB50. Also, we have another MAPS program on sale. If you're more interested in looks, if you like the show and no go, you like to train like a bodybuilder, try MAPS Aesthetic. That's a bodybuilder-inspired program. That one's 50% off as well. You can get Aesthetic at mapsblack.com. Same 50% off code, FEB50. So that's for both to get half off. All right, here comes the show. Hold on just one second. Yeah, today is better. I'm not getting that yeah, sound like yesterday. Mm -hmm. Well, Doug, you're like a, uh, what are those guys, those people that get paid a lot of money to taste wine? Oh, yeah, sommelier. sommelier. That's you. Mm -hmm. Sommelier of sound? Yeah. This this kind of, uh, he's an was, ear sommelier. Uh, this, I'm, uh, yeah. this was in- uh, Sound sommelier. That was uh, four years old, sound 14 mollier. years old. I kind of like that. The sommelier that of sound. Year. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's kind of, that's kind that of- That was a dry year. And, you can make that a shirt. No, I'm going to call I'm the sound, the farmer, sound mollier. Sound over here. <laughs> and the farmer wore Adidas when he picked the grapes. Mm. Yeah. You know, and I'll be like, it made me drunk. You read, you guys, <laughs> Doug could hear our thoughts. Hold on a second. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Not that again, Sal. <laughs> yeah. You guys ready? Yeah. We hot, Doug? We are hot. All right, ready? All right. To trot. Look, check this out. Sometimes you can actually lose weight on the scale and still get fatter. Ooh, I like this. Ooh, right skinny fat. Dude, I, I, now I remember the first time this happened to a client of mine, and they were so befuddled. A great word, right? Before. Wow, yeah. They were so flabbergasted. I'll use another <laughs> word. Uh, that they were like, they were depressed about it. And so what happened, so I'll, I'll tell the Bro, story. Bro, do you remember when this first happened to you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that, I was devastated. Yeah, so so what happens is, and I'll tell the story of my client. So she did an extreme Kerfuffled? diet. No. Did an extreme diet and lost 10 pounds on the scale. I tested her body fat percentage and her body fat percentage went up a percent. And she was like, how is this possible? The scale has went down. It doesn't make any sense. And I said, look, I said, body fat percentage is a percentage of your overall body weight. So if you lost 10 pounds, but seven pounds was muscle and three pounds was body fat, you are smaller, but now your body fat is a larger percentage of your overall body weight because you've lost muscle. So, and this happens to people sometimes. Mm -hmm. They'll lose weight and they've lost muscle through either doing just tons of cardio and cutting their calories too low and whatever. And then they are smaller but flabbier versions of themselves with a slower metabolism. They can't figure this out what happened. This is always a hard conversation when you get the body fat dunk tank uh, to come in yeah, and start to do these competitions. Up. And um, yeah, and that would be the information that they would receive was like, wow, but now my 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 entire composition of body fat increased. Like, how is that even possible? This didn't just this didn't just happen sometimes. This happens most of the time. Yeah. And I'll never forget when I brought the dunk tank in for all my trainers. So we did a competition. So this is when it really came full circle oh, for this me. Is hitting the so I kind of oh bro. So I kind of seen it with clients. And when you when it's a client, so part of that is you're wondering if oh maybe they the, the adherence, right? Maybe they weren't listening to what you said or yeah. maybe they weren't training that hard or maybe whatever, right? You're, you're, you're kind of, as a trainer, you're going like, oh, I wonder how honest they're being with me about what they said they were doing. Well, I did this competition. At this time, I have like 20-some trainers. I believe Ju Justin's part of this group. And there's like 20-something trainers. We decided to do, I put money on the line, you know, who can get, you know, the change, the, the greatest change in body fat percentage over a course of like three months. And so everyone's all in on this. And when we go and get dunked, I'd say more than half of my trainers, including myself on the first one, my body fat percentage went up. And I mean, this is after me like consistently dieting, training consistently, not mm -hmm. fucking up anywhere. And I was pissed. And I remember everybody thought the dunk tank was inaccurate. But what it really highlighted is how easily 
you can overtrain and undereat. Yep. Even people that are that that advanced understand nutrition and exercise really well. How what a fine line that is when you are in a caloric deficit and and you're also training like five seven days a week like mm -hmm. most of these trainers were. How easily you can drop. 10, 15 pounds on the scale, and all it takes, right? You lose 10 pounds on the scale. All it takes for the body fat percentage to go up in a situation like that, it's not as difficult as you think. 10 pounds come off the scale, and six of it is muscle, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. four of it's fat, and you got fatter, mm -hmm. even though you're 10 pounds lighter on the scale. This was mind-blowing for all my trainers, and a lot of them were debating, oh, it's not true. I look better. I feel better. It's like, nah, bro, you lost muscle yeah, speed because is not in your benefit with with losing weight well no. what happens is that it, what happens is and this happens to clients it happens to trainers is they decide they're going to get shredded or lean out yeah they overdo it and they re yeah they they cut back dramatically on calories mm -hmm. they increase activity and then they just watch the scale You're and they watch starvation state at that point your body's trying to reserve as much energy and as it's possible. it's deceiving because this not only does the skill don't but you get smaller yeah. You know, your your pant your your yeah, pant you buckle. Different. Yeah, you look different. So you start going like, oh, it's working. I'm going the right the right direction, not realizing that you're you're losing muscle, okay, as fast as you are losing yeah. body fat. Yep. To put it differently, just so if someone's confused watching this right now, so twenty pounds of body fat on a one hundred pound person is twenty percent body fat, which is for a man that would be high body fat percentage. Okay. So if you had a hundred pound guy, twenty pounds of body fat. He's at 20% body fat. That's a lot of body fat for someone that weight. Now, if you took a 200-pound man who had the same amount of body fat, 20 pounds of body fat, it's 10% body fat. <clears throat> that is lean. That's a six-pack on the 200-pound man. So that's kind of how it works. On the flip side, you can gain weight on the scale and get leaner that's right. and get a leaner body fat percentage. So if everybody watching this right now lost zero pounds of body fat but gained 10 pounds of muscle your body fat percentage would automatically drop because now that amount of body fat that you have on your body is a smaller percentage mm -hmm. of your all body weight, overall body weight. And this is why oftentimes I'd get clients whose weight would go up a little bit on the scale and they couldn't understand why they would keep getting compliments that right. they were looking leaner. They like, look better. Yeah, like this is so weird. My coworkers keep telling them I look leaner, but I gained like three or four pounds on the scale. How is this possible? I love this conversation because this was a very pivotal moment for me as a trainer because it, it completely changed the way I communicated this to my client, my weight loss clients, my clients that wanted to lose 50, yeah. 40, 50 plus pounds of fat. And this is, this is the beginning of when I would start having this conversation of, okay, mm -hmm. I know you hired me to lose 50 pounds, but what I'm going to tell you right now is this first month or two, I actually don't want to see anything come off the scale mm -hmm. where just a couple of years before that, you know, I was on, I was in a hurry to show them weight loss. Yeah. So they would re-sign with me. It was like, yeah. oh, you want to lose 50 pounds. So they, let's say they bought 10 sessions. I got a month with them. Okay. I well, got to show them some, I got to show them some yeah. results. Yeah. And so cut the calories, cardio, train them. And then at the end of the month, I'm like, we did 10 pounds. Yeah. All right, let's sign up for some more. And then before you know it, you hit this hard plateau or you go do the body fat percentage and realize, oh shit, they got fatter. So this was a, a complete shift in the way I looked and trained my clients going forward. And I started telling those clients that wanted to lose weight that, listen, I know that's your ultimate goal, but it's body fat that we really want to lose. That's it, because you could cut your leg off and lose 20 pounds. Right. That's not the kind of weight that you want to lose. It's about body fat percentage. And the difference between a lean, you know, if you're a female watching this, if you're a woman and you're like, I want to get down to, I don't know, I'll make up a number. I want to get down to 110 pounds. Forget that for a second. What you probably want is a lean body fat percentage. Right. And the weight on the scale is a bit arbitrary. It doesn't mean much. I've talked about this uh, many times on the podcast, but I used to have this female trainer that worked for me. And she was just, she was lean and sculpted and she lifted weights all the time, very athletic. And I would bring her in my office oftentimes to, to help sell memberships and personal training. Now, she wouldn't come in and sell the programs. It was usually when I had a, and this typically would happen with women because they were a little bit more reluctant to want to see the scale go up at all. And typically it's because I'm showing them the weights and I'm showing them the machines and we're doing a tour of the gym and they'll say something to me like, no, 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 I don't want to bulk up. I'm not trying to build. I just want to do the treadmill. I just want to, and I'd explain kind of what we're talking about now. And then I'd do this challenge for them. And it was a very effective thing. It was an incredible sales tool. And I'd sit down with them and I'd say, I tell you what, I'm going to bring in one of my female trainers. And if you can guess her body weight within 15 pounds, I'll give you a free membership for a month. But if you can't guess, 
then you need to really strongly consider what I'm talking about. How does that sound? They'd be like, oh yeah, I'll, I'll guess. I'd bring her in and she was this five foot one, lean, tiny waist sculpted, you know, female trainer. And they would always guess like 100 pounds, 105 pounds. She was 130 pounds, but she was small yeah. because muscle is very dense. Muscle takes up about two thirds the amount of space that body fat does. Um, but this is a good conversation it's because- a, It's a really good conversation yeah. because this is, I think this is one of the number one reasons why people struggle with fat loss because it's not as simple as we make. I know there's a lot of stuff right now where we you, you hear- the law of thermodynamics, right? You have calories in, calories yeah. out. That's all it is. Like, oh, if I'm, you're eating this much, cut it down to this. But it's not that simple because if you take somebody, let's say they're maintenance, right? So they, they don't lose or gain 2,000 calories. They want to lose X amount of pounds of fat, so they decide to reduce their calories. They drop down to 1,500 calories. Okay, seems fine. But what happens if the, of those 1,500 calories, they're only getting 20 grams of protein for the day? What is going to happen? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, they lose muscle. Or what if they're not mm -hmm. sending a, a hey, I need muscle signal? Right, right. And, then, and they're doing training. more cardio based exercise, right? They got circuit training going on. Yeah. So you got circuit training going on. So they're lifting really light weights. So they're not really sending a loud muscle yeah. building signal. They're burning tons of calories. They're eating 20 to 30 grams of protein. What is going to happen? Yeah. Yeah. Your body is going to pare down muscle. You're not feeding it enough to keep that muscle on there. You're not sending a signal general. loud enough yeah. to keep muscle. And so what ends up happening is, yeah, the scale goes down, but they just slow their metabolism. Yeah, down. your body, keep this in mind, uh, this is an evolutionary trait, right? So we evolved for thousands and thousands and thousands of years in an environment where calories were very tough to come by. Very Starvation was one of the number one threats. It's no longer that way, but this is how we typically evolved. And so what your body is very good at doing two things. It will, number one, adjust your behaviors to get you back at calorie maintenance. In other words, if you're eating lower than you're burning, it'll ramp up. Uh, appetite. It'll lower energy to try and get you to sit and not move as much. It'll do all kinds of things to your behaviors to get you to burn less calories or especially eat more calories, right? So that's one. The other thing that it does is it tries to change <coughs> the calorie burn side of the formula by reducing your cal caloric requirements. And one of the most effective ways to do this, besides getting you to not move as much, one of the most effective ways to do this is to shrink the size of your engine. So it's like, a, it's like if you have a car if I want to make my V8, you know, Suburban burn less gas and I had the ability to snap my fingers and give myself a four-cylinder engine, that would be one of the most effective ways to do it was cut the engine. In fact, you know, newer models, in fact, they'll do that. They'll switch from four-cylinder to eight-cylinder, depending on how you drive, to reduce the amount of gas consumption. So what your body does is it's always constantly working its hormones and manipulating its own tissues and your behaviors to keep that balance. So that's the challenge. That's why weight loss is so hard and that's why it's so hard to maintain. So what we can do, the most effective thing we can do in this scenario is understand this and say, what are some things that I can do that will convince my body? So that's what you got to do. You got to convince your body to increase my calorie burn, right? Now I can force it by just moving more all the time, but your body's very, very good at making movement more efficient. It can actually learn and, and teach itself to burn less and less calories over time doing the same type of activity. And it's very good at doing this. The most effective way to manipulate the calorie burn is to build the size of your engine, right? Gain muscle. So you have to, if, if you really wanna lose weight in an effective way, you have to tell your body, we need more muscle, we need strength. It's more important to us that we're strong and then we have muscle for our survival mm -hmm. than it is to ha have a lower calorie burning engine. That's the argument that you're basically making to your body. So how do you do that? Well, you lift weights. Yeah. Now your body, the stress that your body is, is sensing is, well, we need strength, but that's not all. You also have to feed it appropriately because if you don't feed it appropriately, you can send all the strength muscle building signal you want. That's your right. body's like, we just don't have the capacity well, we, to we, build more we muscle. We try to bring this up because, I mean, this strategy, what does that provide you with? Like an increased appetite, you have more options and flexibility in your diet. Like having more strength for longevity, you yeah. avoid arthritis and pains and unnecessary, you know, abilities that are, you're just going to lose those abilities when you don't have strength and you're not going to be able to do as much. And so, it, and plus you get, you're going to get better sleep, you're going to have more energy. There's just a lot more benefits with that strategy than to just pare down 
down, uh, you know, your overall mass and, and, and slim down. Yeah. And then the other thing to consider too, is when you are in that, when you understand this and you're like, look, the scale is one metric, but it's part of a big, uh, pie that I need to take a look at. And, and a most more important piece of the pie <coughs> is body fat percentage, because that means much more than just the scale as we just explained performance and strength and all those things. Let's look at the whole picture. Let's consider that. Let's let's adjust our training nutrition around that. And then when we do, and we're sending the right signal to build muscle, and we're feeding the body appropriately, what the body does, so let's say the body says, okay, I'm getting the message. We need strength. We need muscle. Oh, and we have the nutrients to do so, so we feel safe doing so. It doesn't stop there. Here's one of my favorite things that happens. Your body organizes its messenger hormones or just its hormones to do this, right? So what kind, what hormone profile tells your body to build more muscle? Well, in men and in women, a muscle building hormone profile is a youth hormone profile. It's a similar one to the one you have when you're feeling great and you're in your teens and 20s. It's higher testosterone, both in men and women, balanced estrogen and progesterone in women, better growth hormone, better insulin sensitivity. So it's like this incredible cascading effect. Now, if you don't do any of that and you ignore that and you just look at the scale and all you care about is losing weight on the scale, you very often will fall into the trap of telling my body to lose muscle, pare it down. Now my hormones are organized in a way to reduce muscle mass. This is why over dieting, over cardio in men results in lower testosterone levels. In women, you see the effects of HPA axis dysfunction, which we used to call adrenal fatigue back in the day. I know people roll their eyes, but that's what we used to kind of refer to it as. Higher cortisol, estrogen and progesterone imbalanced. And then, as you said, Adam, you hit this nasty plateau. So you're like, oh, I'm eating 1,500 calories. I lost 10 pounds. Oh, no, it's not working anymore. Uh, I guess I go down to 1,200 calories, lost four, five more pounds. Now what? Go down to 1,000 calories? Okay, and then you get to your goal, and you're like, uh, "I got to eat a thousand calories for the rest of my life." Yeah, right. Like, how is this going to yeah. possibly? You're stuck you know, miserable, down there. and that's why you know, yeah. eighty-five plus percent put it all back on. Yes, because yeah. at one point, and, and uh, do you blame them? At uh, one point, you go, "My goal was to lose fifty pounds. I busted my ass to get thirty to forty off. Mm -hmm. I'm eating only a thousand calories a day. I'm training five to seven days a week. This is fucking miserable. Yeah, yeah. I'd ridiculous. rather be a little fatter. Yeah, I know. Right. <laughs> and then you just accept that's what happens. That's yeah. exactly what happens to people. But it doesn't have to be that way. But it, it, it and it really it, it's that shift. Like you have to start looking at okay. I know this is my my long term goal is to lose the fifty pounds or whatever it is. But I first want to build a, a metabolism that's going to help me versus working against your metabolism by instantly just cutting. Yeah, calories. it's like this. I'll, I'll use an analogy, right? It's like you got to paint uh, a, a huge fence. You got this huge fence. You got happy paint. trees, and you're gonna just paint it with one coat. And you have a paintbrush. It's one of those little tiny paintbrushes that you could do little details on canvases with. And then you also have a, a roller or a spray, you know, a machine that sprays paint, right? And what do you do? You pick the freaking paintbrush and you sit there. And after a year, you get like a third of the way there and you're like, I'm done, man. I can't keep doing this. Taking forever. All you had to do was pick up the freaking the, 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 the spray machine or pick up the roller and you would have been done in three months because you would have done something. It would have done it in a way that was far more effective. So this is, and, and it's so frustrating. And the reason why I brought this up is because people often do what you said, Adam, is they, the, oh, body fat test, it's not accurate. Oh, I, it's, it's long. There's no way yeah. this could possibly happen. Oh no, it happens. It's actually more often. Well, than yeah, because you're still doing work, and so you attribute the work as progress, even yes. though you know might not be taking you to the desired outcome. Yeah. Speaking of fat loss, interesting study I just read uh, today. It was really fascinating study. So they took a group of people who averaged a little less than six and a half hours of sleep every single night. So they obviously weren't sleeping very well. A half uh, hour of sleep? No, no, six, a little less than six and a half hours. Oh, oh they said so, half hours. Like, no, six and a half. <laughs> and so, yeah, no. And, and this is a lot of people are like this. A lot of people will get like, you know, six hours of sleep a night. They're just constantly pushing themselves yeah, yeah, or yeah. whatever. And all they did was take these people and get them to sleep one hour more a night. That's it. And they wanted to see what would happen. They all got leaner. All of them got leaner. Just naturally, or were they doing something? Well, when they looked at what was going on, what they found was that extra hour of sleep fundamentally changed their behaviors. Mm. So they consumed about 150 calories less a day. And it's because the-, the Well, I noticed that. That's one, one of the craziest things I notice about being sleep deprived is my- cra And it took me a long time to start to piece that. You just don't really- 
put it together. Like we, everyone has like their cravings, right? Everyone's experienced. Oh, all of a sudden I crave this certain thing, but not often do we kind of like try and connect it to something, right? You just, just accept that. Oh, I'm craving this today. Cause I'm hungry yeah, or I yeah. feel like it, but over years, obviously of training clients and then paying attention to this and dieting in and out, like, Boy, it's crazy. When I have a, a night where I had a rough night of sleep, the, the I have the strongest cravings for yeah. greasy junk Reese's. food and sweets. And like, yeah. it's wild, like how directly connected those are. I know. And it's so funny too, because if you're, if you're somebody that's <clears throat> like, okay, I want to lose a little weight. Like what's one thing I can do that might make a big difference. And if you're somebody that chronically just doesn't get seven and a half to eight and a half hours of sleep every night. Uh, maybe that's all you got to do. And Don't do anything weird? else. You could just sleep and you lose weight. Yeah, just. I mean, if that's your issue. Yeah, just go to bed. Like, like make it, make it a, a goal to go to bed an hour early. And don't do anything else. Right. Yeah. And then your behaviors. Naturally what it, it's not the sleep that's making us, you know, burn more calories. It's that you're 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 gonna have you're gonna have less cravings, and it's a, and you'll have better behaviors. Better around. behaviors, right? Yeah. But you don't even have to. That's the, the beauty about this kind of behavior modification type thing is you don't have to consciously try to eat less or do anything else. All you got to do is be like, I'm just going to sleep another hour, you yeah. know, and then boom. And then you make better decisions, you yeah. know, throughout your day. And plus all you by, feel more balanced. All by itself. Yeah. I think a lot of, and I mean, how do you do that too? I think that this is the next, you know, part of that conversation. And I really think that it's the sleep routine. It's something that we talk about all the time. If there's an area that I neglect, yeah. it's that. It's yeah. like, uh, you know, I say it all the time, but then I'm like, oh shit, here I am. Yeah. It's 11 o'clock and I'm still up yeah. doing bullshit. Like, I mean, honestly, it's like you have to. We just answered a question on a live call the other day, and that was one of the things we were talking about. Is like you have to make that a priority. Like if you're only sleeping six hours a night, and this is an area where you're trying to improve, like you you have to take your getting ready for bed seriously. And actually, the same way you commit to yourself of getting up and showering and brushing your teeth and getting to work on time, you have to think that same way of like getting to bed on time. Like you have to commit that. Yep. Okay, I'm going to be to bed at nine thirty or ten or whatever your not mm -hmm. your time is. And then it doesn't just end there. It's like okay, which means I should probably eat my dinner. More like yeah, two six, hours before. yeah, two three hours before, and then I should be getting turning the lights down, getting off TV, getting off computer an hour before that, and it's like you actually have to consciously. What, do you, what is your guys' bed? Do you guys have a time that you you <clears throat> try and hit your target time to go to bed? Yeah, we're tr we try to get in bed by ten thirty. Mm. Is it ten thirty? Yeah, yeah ten thirty is kind 11, of eleven hard. eleven thirty. I mean, it's I'm a late person, and again, this is, this affects my morning. Yeah, uh, and why I'm so caffeinated in the morning. I was like, just gonna say, I wonder if it's connected to <laughs> weird, like <laughs> no association there at all. <laughs> Uh, but yeah. then what time do you wake up? So I'll wake up at like 6.30, you know. Oh, 11 typically. to 6.30 is okay, but you're trying to go to 11, so I'm assuming you often miss the mark. Yeah, I'll go to midnight, <laughs> like, uh, more than I'd like to. Oh, but, shit. Um, it just, dude, because it, it's time spent with my wife by myself, you know, without yeah. the kids interrupting us. Right, you time. might be having sex, which I think you get a pass and for. that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if, if it's a good like, night. Is it yeah. sleepy yeah. sex? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, and that helps me sleep better. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. in effect, you know, that that helps. Dude, I'm so mad. Uh, you know, you brought this, I was going to bring in a study today to verify my cheese addiction. Everybody's been sending it to me. Oh it's my like, God. It, it, like if you see it about no, like, I didn't see it. What is it? You assimilate protein more effectively. Because you eat cheese? Cause, yeah, when you eat when you include cheese in your diet. <laughs> oh, no, that's not the one I saw. No, I saw, you didn't see that one? No, there was a mayor that said that. Is that because of the carbohydrates? Is that what I, they do? I, don't, I didn't even read it. Because we know I that, just, right? We know that if you, you assimilate protein better, if you actually maybe, pair it with carbohydrates. Maybe we yeah, could Doug, find Doug, this. Doug, see if you can yeah, find that. Because yeah. I, yeah, I would it's like something like that. Well, like, compared to what? Anything that builds my case. Yeah, well, compared to what? Welcomed. Because I wonder if it's like the egg studies, because they show that. Well, compared to not like what that's why I'm saying the carbohydrates because you're getting some carbohydrates. In no, no, too. no, no, no. I think it's something else because maybe, but it might be something else because you know, did you guys see the egg study? Right, like, like if you just ate egg whites, you assimilate less protein as a percentage than you do if you eat a whole egg. And so there was a study that showed whole oh, egg really? was better. Yeah. So I'm wondering if it has to do with hmm. the fats, the, the cholesterol, the, or something. the, the, yeah. pro, the, the maybe the carbs uh -huh. or something else. Because whole yeah, food sources, combo of the yeah fats yeah. and amino acids. In uh, there. The cells of your small intestines absorb the amino acid released by cheese digestion. No, that's not it, Doug. That's not the study. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Come on, Say, Doug. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, Let's look go not familiar with maybe a made-up oh, yeah, Instagram study. study. I have no idea, yeah. dude. If it's valid or not, you probably should have saved it. Probably. probably. While you're looking this up, I have a question for Sal that's related to our our partners in commercials day with Live On because so, dude. First of all. 
the having a kid in school, you know, as a as a two and a half year old is real. This whole I was told this right. Everyone told me this. It's like one of these parent dad things that you know yeah. all the other dads tell you it's coming. Mm. Yeah, but you don't even realize how crazy it is until you're in it. Which is my kid since the beginning of winter. So let's say October ish, uh, October November ish has been sick more than he's not. Yeah, it's yeah. just like right now, Katrina and I celebrate like, oh my God, we had a week and Max is not got a runny nose or coughing. It's like, it's crazy how sick he is. And <clears throat> I've caught it the last few times. And so this time I'm trying to be better. Like he just got a sick again, right? He just came off a good week of not being sick or sick again. I'm on my live on lab. So let me, I want to run my stack by you. And I want to know one, if there's anything else I could add to that or if I'm doing the right thing. So I got the the glutathione yeah. I'm taking yeah. with the vitamin C from mm -hmm. Livon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then I take uh, zinc. Yep. And then I take my vitamin D. And there's one more thing I'm taking. Vitamin C, glutathione, vitamin D. What am I missing? There's another thing I'm taking. I think, let's just say it's so four for right now because I can't think of it. Throw else. some quercetin in there. Is that does Livon have that? Uh, they don't, but uh, I would throw quercetin in there for the zinc. The, Livon also has that's really. But good. I'm taking zinc. Uh, yeah, but uh, quercetin helps with the absorption of zinc, uh, and it's also got some good effects for the lungs. And then um, uh, Livon also has acetyl L-carnitine, which, which colors, got some, what color packet? It's a great I go one. I color packet. No, they have alpha lipoic acid <laughs> and alpha lipoic acid. Oh, they, they have, have the acetyl L-carnitine. Yeah, alpha that's lipoic right. is the gray one. Yeah, that's another gray one, I think. And then the and then acetyl L-carnitine. I would take all those. I love alpha lipoic acid. So I should take four of their packets. Then you're saying take right them now. all, bro. Take them all. Take them all <laughs> bro. One shot. I just want to make sure I'm taking. They, you know, I don't like the taste of them, so I, like, uh, I'm trying to take what I need to take. I squeeze it like so, and Courtney like does like the hot water and like or like warm water and like puts it in there and she doesn't even so i shoot it, it like if, i mean just now i took it through the packet it. but i normally put like a little shot glass basically yeah. and put it in there and then i shoot it you guys are such babies no, no i do it straight dude, it tastes no, like bro. farts yeah it's, it is literally just fucking go boom go but i will it. say i don't know what it is that's about the, the glutathione the glutath it's sulfur i think yeah but the glutathione yeah. i like i don't know and i don't know if this is like just in my head or what but i like feel it i swear to god i take it and i'm like oh man but my lungs feel better. <laughs> I do. I do. I don't know. I don't know. Effect, like right. literally, like within like a half hour, I f swear to God, it, it makes me feel better. Yeah, it, no, it's it's uh, glutathione uh, and vitamin D, man, so closely connected to your ability to fight off infection. Yeah. It's really incredible. Okay, did uh, you find your cheese thing? Is it, yeah. yeah. Here's yeah, yeah, a cheese. Yeah, yeah. It says cheese ingestion increases muscle protein synthesis rates both at rest and during recovery from exercise. Okay, so what? Let me read the background here. <laughs> Doug, is there anything specific? Specific about that. Read the. Um, let me see the methods. Thirty grams of protein provided uh, as cheese or milk protein concentrate. Uh -huh. Let's look at the results. Hey, like how about whey, look whey who funded it? If it's funded by Kraft Cheese, we're not even. Let's go to the Kraft. Kraft. That's like Kraft, plastic shit, Kraft dude. fucking funded this. We're not even. So is it saying thing. that uh, that the milk protein ingestion and the che the cheese was better, or that they were both good? Oh boy! Cheese you know I'm not good at reading these studies at all. Uh, Thirty-eight percent higher peak concentration following milk protein than cheese ingestion. So plasma total. So go down to the conclusion. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The postprandial muscle protein. So the rates increase when you add cheese, bro. Cheese or it's science. Oh, stupid. Come on, the difference, stupid. okay, cheese, <laughs> ready for this? Cheese and milk. Cheese is life. No difference when you see what the protein synthesis post workout. So I guess they were comparing cheese and milk. I, yeah. I I don't know. Yeah. I you mean, know what you want to know what's funny? Dairy, dairy. So long as you can tolerate it, because there's a lot of people that have uh, dairy issues. But if you don't have any dairy issues, dairy. Everybody is, sleeps on it, bro. It is the world's don't, best. Don't sleep on it. Don't it's sleep on, on the dairy. That, that dairy. It is, listen, uh, uh, dairy and eggs. So long as you can tolerate them, are nature's most anabolic foods. Yeah. It's, it's true. Now, why do you think that there's so many people are intolerant to it? Well, dairy. More, it feels like more so in the last decade than the previous. It always yeah. has been. You know what this? Okay, here's the main theory, and it's a pretty good theory that humans didn't domesticate um, cows and start consuming dairy uh, for quite a while. So we, we did that relatively I mean, the recently. The Mongols did, so it has to go way beyond that. No, no, no. It depends on the region, right? So for a long time, most humans didn't do that. People in Northern Europe did, I don't remember, like 10,000 or more years ago, they started doing it. That's a long time ago, bro. And, yes, but in the whole grand scheme of things, mm. it's not that much. You look at uh, Asian populations, African populations, Mediterranean populations, far more rates of lactose intolerance and dairy intolerance. But there are regions in Africa, like the Maasai tribe, for example, 
or those regions where the Messiah, they can tolerate dairy no problem, and they've been consuming it for a long time. You're right about the Mongols, that they consume lots of dairy. So there's definitely regions in the world where dairy is very easily tolerated, and then areas where it's not so much. And it has all to do with whether or not your ancestors you know, had a lot of dairy or not. Now, you know what's funny about that? When, it first, when we first started consuming dairy, however many thousands of years ago, it definitely weeded people out. Could you imagine being part of a tribe, and they're like, hey, this is the food we got. And you're like, fuck, it gives me <laughs> gas and diarrhea. Yeah. Old days. Yeah. It sucks for Sal. You're dead. <laughs> well, nobody's having sex with you, so no gonna, you're not going to have no kids, dude. Your genes are <laughs> You're hunting up. an animal, and all of a sudden the like, world is cruel back then. Runs you away. And you're screwed. Oh, man. <laughs> hey, back to the live on uh, supplements. Alpha lipoic acid, okay, very interesting compound. It dramatically increases the absorption of creatine. Um, and oh, interesting! And the utilization of uh, glucose and uh, um, so and, ins- and your insulin response to carbohydrates. So post workout, alpha lipoic acid with creatine and carbohydrates and proteins. So you have your post workout meal. Have some creatine with that. Take some alpha lipoic acid. You're gonna go get me some right now, Doug. Is that what you're doing? Yeah. <laughs> no, he's, he's, I'm walking. Out. Okay, thank you. You get giving Jerry my keys. You'll have a better, faster absorption rate, and it's quite significant uh, with creatine. So I've been taking it now for a while. Post interesting. Yeah. So it's pretty pretty good stuff. They've got some good. Uh, are are you seeing like uh, like other companies that have like creatine or post workout shakes actually including that in there or no? Hmm. Or the original. <laughs> I hate. I don't want to give these people a plug because they have shitty supplements. <laughs> but the original Muscle Tech, uh, oh, Cell Tech, really. But it also included 75 grams. Of, well, I know, but uh, still, sugar, that's interesting. Extra, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah. I mean, I still stand by that was like one of the first real supplements that I had noticed I got anything from. But I'm sure oh, like 300 more tech. calories. That was yeah. a popular, yeah. yeah. And you had to load it, don't forget. You know what I'm saying? So you were doing it. Was it was the first time I think <laughs> I, I, I like my, it was too much sugar. I never experienced that. I remember drinking it and getting like nauseous. Like, oh. What flavor were you? I was great. I was great. Are yeah. you great, guys? No, I got punch, grape fruit punch one. Oh, fruit punch was gross. Yeah. Yeah. So weird, dude. That no, was good. Yeah, mm-hmm. fruit punch was that gross. That explains a lot. It was sweet. Yeah, it explains a lot. Why? <laughs> just, hey, you're just, what I does saw, that explain? I don't listen, know listen, listen, Linda. I, I saw in Justin's notes for today's talk, he had put something up there. I've been dying to talk to you guys about it. And I totally forgot about it, and I'm so glad you put it in there. Is the 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 Twindler Swindler? What's it? The oh, t- no, no, no. Yeah. What, why'd you call it Twindler? Oh, twindler. twindler. Tinder. <laughs> Tinder. <laughs> well, yeah, because Swindler, t- Twindler. Yeah, yeah. the Tinder, the Tinder Swindler. Yeah, yeah. The, it's a Netflix documentary on this guy that was hustling chicks on uh, on Tinder it's and the craziest bro, story the, I've heard in a while. The the level that he went to. Now so, I heard he got something like nine or ten million. So you dollars. haven't watched this yet? No, I just heard about. Oh, it. Oh, you got to watch oh, this. Dude. Okay, so he yeah no millions. Yeah. He, I mean, he's. Now, how is he doing this? Is so, he like, okay, the crazy part. So, we're watching. It's hard it. to explain. But I'm going to spoil it. I don't care. There's still, you should watch it anyways because there's lots of stuff in there to watch. But I mean, the first like half hour, Katrina and I, like, it sucks you in because Katrina and I are going like, how is he going to come out of this? Because he's spending money. Yes. Like, he's spending a lot of his own money flying on private jets and doing this stuff. Like, uh, first, first dates. Get somebody on it's, on it's all to Tinder, hook you, though. yeah. So he would, you know, fly on his private jet with a, a girl on their first date, go to a five star restaurant. So she's like, oh, he's rich, yeah, handsome, he's charming, yeah. So he's like, he shows the light and pulls he has up some girl to validate his character. You know, has uh, like this this girl is supposed to be his kid. Oh. You know, all this kind of stuff. Um, Thanks, yeah, guys. and it's it's like the whole thing is like really like displaying this persona. Like he's like super successful, and like he just like totally like portrays this like fantasy that a lot of girls have. And so once he hooks them, well, and here's here's the thing too: uh, the the girls that he's done it so many times then none of them want to rat him out because they all feel terrible every, every they, time because they volunteer their money. They're like embarrassed by it. Yeah, yeah. and I mean they're he. You think, okay, how does this guy do this? Because he's he's spending like, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars to show how rich he is. And he's got girls that don't even have that much money, but mm-hmm. convincing them to take loans out and yeah. open credit cards and just- Now, why are they giving him money? Them out. Why, how, why are they giving him money? Because he's he so he rich. Doing, so he, he builds this relationship with them over the course of months, right? So like, it's like a, he's, he's all, and he's always working like at least one or two girls at wow. a time. Yeah. And he and then all of a sudden he comes up like he'll he has these and he's like the same pictures he has a body he rolls with bodyguards all the time and stuff and then all of a sudden he'll show a picture of them like his bodyguard jumped and fucked up and 
There are people yeah, are coming it's after the me. Same exact pictures and videos he sends every single girl. Like at, at a certain point where he knows he has them, he's like, "Now crisis," and he's like, "I need money." Yes, he's like, "I have enemies," and I'm in the diamond business or whatever business he's he's pretending right. he's in. Oh my! And he's God. like, "Oh, they're after me," and I'm I, like, "Dude!" And, and the thing is, that he's been spending so much money on them that they're like, "They don't even oh question my God!" It. Like, yeah, they don't even question. Like, you know Let what? me help you. Let's see got, what I can do. We got to go a little deeper. Okay, do you guys remember the movie True Lies? Yeah. Okay, great movie. And yeah. you remember how um, Arnold Schwarzenegger's buddy uh, was trying to fool his wife to see if she was having an affair or whatever? And, oh, oh, no, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, there was yeah, a guy yeah. that was there was a guy that was fooling he her. Had, he had the Corvette, and he was like, yes. He and his the... and his whole ploy was he's a special agent mm -hmm. and a spy. Or okay. yeah. <clears throat> and, and and she fell for it or whatever. Okay. What this guy's doing is he's playing on female psychology, where rich mysterious, good looking. Yeah. Oh my God, there's some risk and some danger. Yeah. Ooh, I'm getting the chills. Let's do this. And, and he's playing their psychology. And it's funny to me because to swindle women, it's, Pretty damn complicated. Swindle guy oh. is pretty fucking easy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. that's why yeah. it's 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 on another level what he's doing, and he's getting he away with money it because they're freely giving him the money, so you can't really prosecute him. Well, wow. he, what ends up happening, by the way, like he he ends up getting caught. He goes he goes in jail. The girls who open the credit cards, they're still fucked. Mm -hmm. The courts don't like award her money or anything like that because they put it in their name. Yeah, it's, everything's in their they, name. They 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 not only that, he even gets these girls to like. Like he's on the phone or he's like in another country using the credit card. He gets the girls to get on the phone with Amex and say it's them mm -hmm. using their card to help protect him so he doesn't get caught. By, it's fucking brilliant, bro, what he does. Oh, so it, even at the end of it, every time caught he up, gets a score, he goes to date the next girl that's in wherever he's flying to next. Wow. He, he's using the money he just got yeah. to wow. wine and dine the next girl. That's the challenge when you get uh, catfish or ripped off. So listen, you don't want to say anything. Bro, listen you're embarrassed. To this. Dude does. Dude gets sentenced for one year. Does five five months. He's out. You can look up his handle right now. Fool is flying around in private jets, <laughs> Rolls doing Royces, it. doing it again. He's still on Tinder. It, unreal. It's crazy. I wonder how many he literally got a slap on the wrist. I mean, all the evidence. There's a documentary around him. Everything out in five months. Running game again. Yeah, oh, I'm telling you, he's tapping into some weird psychology. It's very well. Weird. Remember, I brought up that one guy who was because yeah. you doing know serial killers in prison <clears throat> will get women who will like or fans write no letters and want to marry them and shit like that. <laughs> serial killers, like yeah. fucking these people who killed and dismembered people, yeah. will have fans, women, female fans. Yeah, but you don't know him how I <clears throat> know him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> Yeah. But well, like, so what really I was a, so a tell me you weren't tripping out on this when you're watching the documentary. These are girls that have if they it's already all came out and they're telling the story and even when they're talking about him, you can tell they're like they're not naked. They're not like scorned. They're not oh. like he's a piece of shit. They're telling the story like he was such they, they a good. They genuinely guy. like fell in love with this. Yes, guy. or uh, or like we're like best friends. They thought even after getting even fucked, just a friend, he fucks he, his friends over too. <laughs> wow, it's crazy. But bro. like I, like I said, it's it's psychology because if you look at the way guys get ripped off, it's well, you it's know, much, it's, it's much easier. More simple. No, I'll give you your, I'll give you, know you an example yeah, yeah, yeah. the way the, the, the way the guys sex. get hustled because I I watched a, a doc on this where there's a. Where there's guys that do this, they pretend, they go, they find a, you know, an Instagram model who has 10 million followers, yeah, rip it. all her pictures, yeah. put it on, create a new profile. Within a week, some dude will slide in the DMs, flirt back and forth for like a week, then get them to pay for, you know, yep. private flights or whatever like yep. that somewhere in the country and then just cut cut the Instagram off and yep. they just got a free... That's what I mean. It's way more simple. Oh, yeah. hella easy it's for like a guy. <laughs> Look at me half naked. Hey, yeah. buy me a flight ticket. Okay. Yeah, it's done. <laughs> okay. But <laughs> she <laughs> likes me. Bunch of dumb monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> Girls no. are going to be hella sophisticated. No, you don't understand. <laughs> she really... Let's say when you take your buddy to the strip club. Yeah, strip club. You yeah, know, when, you, when, you're, when you're first old she enough to go. Me. Oh, bro, I remember when I turned 18. We're going to hang out after this, When I turned 18, because when you turn 18... I remember I on this podcast Podcast, I shared the the ultimate stripper story. Like, remember when I got yeah, fucked in Hawaii? Dude. Yeah, yeah. It's because no. you're, you know what? I, so when you turn eighteen, there's not much. It's not like exciting. What can I do? I can go to a strip club and I can go to war. So I guess I'll go to a strip club. <laughs> yeah. And I, yeah, I, I your hard options. decision. Yeah. And <laughs> I remember, I remember options. as an eighteen year old kid, I took a couple hundred bucks. It was a lot of money for me. Went to a strip club with my buddies, and you're getting all this attention from this like half naked girl, and she's talking to you, uh, and she's and you're literally. 
you don't realize your own psychology, right? Especially uh-huh. at that age, you're like, no, no. You tell your buddy, like, no, no, you don't understand, dude. She really likes me. Like, yeah. she's just doing this because she's trying to, you know, she's going to medical your school. Your other brain <laughs> completely takes over. I literally, so, literally. Yeah. She's going to medical school and she needs to make money to support herself. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, but she really liked me, dude. And I could tell she, I could tell she wanted to, like, really make out with me, but the bouncer was watching. a real yeah, connection. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. How much money did you give her? Uh, a couple hundred bucks. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's such a stupid. We're such you have monkeys. to watch this, though, because I, I, I'm following now because I'm so interested in, like, how a documentary yeah, follow this guy. is out on this guy, and he did, and he served time, and he's out, and he's already running game again. I mean, it's we like, can really learn stuff from this guy, dude. Yeah. I well, I just read another article too about. Remember, I brought up the NFT, the rug pulls, yeah. like cryptocurrency. Like the Fed just came out and said they just compensated, like I don't know, three point six billion in in crypto like fraud people that have been stealing. Wow. Crypt- yeah, it's you know, there's this idea that it, because it's on the blockchain, it's so safe, and there's but there's just as many scammers doing that and just regular old money. Yeah, dude. It's yeah. insane. Speaking of Instagram, I got a weird message. This You're morning. off. Well, I couldn't I went, find you this morning. I, I, yeah. I mean, apparently I went on to, I went on to get on and, you know, cause I'll post my memes in the morning or whatever. And I get on there and it says there's been su- some suspicious activity. Please confirm you're not a robot. So it was one of those picture things, you know, how many chimneys are in each, whatever. So yeah. I click on it. I can always click on too many stops. I think yeah. it finally worked. I've been trying for like, I don't know, probably two years now, ever since you passed me. To just kick me kick Yeah, off, I've been yeah. like reporting you. <laughs> Every time you do a political thing, I'm like, report, report, yeah. report, yeah. report. <laughs> you know, finally. But, Take them down. <laughs> and then it did like this confirmation thing. And then I got a message that said, we'll let you know in 24 hours if we've ever. So I don't know if I got kicked off or if someone tried to hack it and their security measures. Just be it. careful. That you don't get suckered into I know. Give giving me my passwords. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I verified everything. Okay. I'm not, I don't fall for that. Well, at least I hope not. <clears throat> so we'll see what happens. Or I got finally kicked off. In which case, uh, you know, dude, I'm, way earlier. I'm like we... a Hydra, bro. You cut my head off, and two more, yeah. bro. <laughs> I'll make it worse. I didn't like my Instagram. Epstein meme. I got. I, it's so for crazy, that. though. It was what? It was just yesterday, the day before. We were all talking, like, you know, uh, this. We're gonna bounce on this whole social media thing real soon here, and just exit and. I mean, the plan was like two years, right? I'm so, so ready, dude. dude. Jump I, off the ship and burn it. Yeah, I'm, you know well, I mean, look, it may, it may force it's, force it's our hand earlier place. than what we expect. Yeah, it is, dude. It's just ugh. yeah. It's it just, is. It's a, I, what did I call? Nobody's it I, happy there. What did yeah. I call? Narcissist it first, land. Yeah. Narcissist hell. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, everybody's just picture me, picture of miserable, me. and you know, trying to keep up or you know, throw well, some I, well, like, the value in defense of it. Okay, so I news there, out there. There's some cool part. Like I okay, being public and trying to grow it and just add followers. Okay, that for sure. But I mean, there's, I mean, it's cool that I have family and friends that like I can go click on. Like I have a cousin. I love my cousin. I don't get to see her all the time, but I have the ability and she's a big poster. She posts all the time. I mean, I get to look at her story and I can see her kid. I feel like I'm getting like so much more for than I did a decade ago Mm -hmm. when we just wouldn't see each other. So there's some positive stuff. For me, it's the value is I get to, and it's like less and less. So this value is actually, it's, um, it's losing this value because of our popularity starting, it's grown quite a bit. But I like the fact that some of our fans can contact me and I can respond, and I like that. Now it's losing its value because there's so many uh, that I can't possibly. Oh, I've comp- you. I, so I've fallen off of that. Like yeah. I remember we used to. I try, well, and there's certain. I have people on there it's that impossible. have been yeah. with me from the very beginning. It's tough now, yeah. And I try to stay loyal to them and answer their questions and stuff like that. Just you know, kind of. By the way, so I'm glad you brought that up because I've had to re- reply to DMs like this. You know. Um, before you you dm or inbox or question about something like literally google search mind pump and then the keywords of the question that you have to yeah ask. we probably have done we episode. have yeah. i i don't know how many times i i someone asked a question and i'm like dude all you had to do is go google mind yeah. pump and that question and like right away three youtube videos a podcast oh. episode and a blog pop up yep, yep, 1800 yep. hours yeah of fitness content it's out there, and that's not me trying to be a dick. More than that, bro. It's well, not me I'm trying to be saying, a dick either. That's go by episodes. We just there's a, you, all not of us probably all get the thousands of DMs. There's no way to possibly get to everybody. At least a quarter of them are like literally that simple of an answer. It's like you could just Google that yeah. with Mind Pump in front of it, yeah. and you're going to get the, like a, the, a, de- a good detailed like YouTube video or a yeah. conversation. The other about thing it. too is the DM where you're giving me. 15 paragraphs. <laughs> yeah, of, I like those ones. Of, of really detailed information. Yeah, you want yeah. me to construct an individualized diet or workout plan for you? 
I can't do that. Sorry. Well, bring it to <laughs> bring it to our uh, live Q and A. You know, yeah. like, like get in on the action. Like that's where we get to have these like. Well, long it's form good you're bringing that up too because we don't talk about that on the show very often. It is is if you another place you can leave questions. Obviously, the uh, Instagram Mind Pump Media leaving it under the qual. That's one place, and then the other thing is to email live at mindpumpmedia.com. So the people that get to get on the the live YouTube videos and ask their question live yeah. to us, you email there and, and we then, can get in and detail. then jerry randomly yeah, we can do him, a so. lot better job of answering your question yeah right. totally <clears throat> anyway so uh this morning i made another uh i made the same mistake i make uh quite often i took too many stimulants you know what i did <laughs> so yohimbi that never think, happens to me yeah i know dude i so yohimbi is a as a compound it's very interesting it acts on the central nervous system it's got some libido boosting benefits for some people that's i never noticed that what i noticed is the energy from especially when you stack it with oh caffeine. did you try that company that's been trying to so get us what i did was yes you did, what i you? did was is i did my normal 300 milligrams of caffeine and then i threw six milligrams because it's got six milligrams of yohimbi in it and normally i do two and a half milligrams well anyway i got this weird cns response so i'm sweating and getting the chills at the same time and i'm like what the hell is going on <laughs> what like am i getting you know am I sick or what's not, up? yeah and i'm like, like oh no, no i'm like no no this is a cns response and i was D doug was in here while i was working out and i looked at doug and i was like i think i might i said doug if i die this is what i want you to tell the doctor dude you are so funny because <laughs> the fact that you even okay so uh, tell the uh, get the audience up to speed here okay so this company has been uh, like literally trying so hard to get us to advertise for them. They're offering a ridiculous amount of money and saying, we'll take anything we can, blah, blah, blah. And so I looked at it and it's like, oh, it's supposed to be for, you know, making your dick harder. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, I'm, <laughs> I'm interested. And, uh, and Sal daughters. right away, I like looked I'm at like, the back hmm. of it, Red was in it and said, nah, whatever, and yeah. ignored it. And so... Justin and I, okay, because we need it. We're, yeah, we're <laughs> <laughs> are, super are, intrigued. Are, yeah, hey. intrigued by this. I mean, yeah, I have no problem, but, but quality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, right. That so, my attention. So it's I, direction I took it. Direction quality. Um, and then, of course, Sal was right. You know, I I did not have any better sex. My erection was no better than it normally is. It was still and, a four on a scale and, of one to ten. Yeah, so it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's just, just as small as it always is. No, I'm saying that. So, but what I did, know, I had really sweaty sex. It got yeah. me sweaty. Is what it did. And I'm like, I don't know if I like that. You know, That's not what a, I'm looking for. It's a CNS uh, stimulant. It also, and I, I, I'm, you know, I don't like to say this because people, are like, oh crap, it's effective. No, it's not. A great fat burner. I know people say that, but it does. The chills that you get from it is because it's it's it stimulates this response, maybe in fat, to cause it to act more like brown fat. And what that does, the chills is a way to warm your body up, so you get that thermogenic effect. So that's probably kind of what's happening. So weird though they they're marketing it as like a because you're like oh take it like a pre workout. I'm like no, I'm you, trying to take it for sex, bro. Because you know how they market Yo it. Yohimbi is shown in studies to help some men with erections and stuff like that. I never got that effect uh, from taking it. It's a vasodilator or what is it's it? It's got some effects like that and something to do with the CNS and, and how it affects the brain. They're, actually, to be honest <laughs> with you, they don't 100% know why it why it works particularly for some people in this way. It actually can even, some women will notice that. Did, but, you, did you get anything from it? You know, I haven't uh, used oh, you guys it did? yet. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were taking it the same night I did. You guys no, did I was going to, and then... Um, Sal talked you out of it, or you didn't no, have sex? No, no, no. The night kind of went sour. Oh! So, yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so I was like, oh, no. I'm not yeah. well, I'm, that for I'm glad you didn't day. take it, and then the night went sour. <laughs> yeah. What am I going to do with this? Oh, I just ran outside. <laughs> this is stupid. <laughs> yeah. No, you know, and also, Yohimbi at night, not, probably not a good idea, because uh, it's a CNS stimulant. You might not sleep as well for yeah. some people. Well, that's what you said, and I'm like, oh, that's late. I was already too late. I had already taken it. When you told me yeah. not to, you're like, "Don't take it for that." I'm like, "Well, it's Mark. If we were gonna sell it, I said I'm gonna sell it as like a you know sex performance thing. I'm not gonna yeah. sell it for a pre workout. Yeah, That's yeah. not what they're. they're it's probably like one of those one out of three guys will experience this. Yeah, so I don't. I, know. I think I'll have to. Test I don't know. It. I think a yeah. little caffeine will even do that for some people. Well, you know? I was disappointed, almost as disappointed as I was with our dinner and our like lack of scallops that we had. Uh, we, hey, speaking ship. of which, um, yeah, that's ridiculous. Have you guys ever gotten? I've got. I get messages like all all the time. I always forget to bring this up on the show. Do you ever get messages where people are asking you more details about Butcher Box? Because uh, you said scalps, you made me. Think yeah, about well, those. Butcher Box has got scalps. That's why I brought yeah. them up because okay. I, Katrina actually said that when we were doing it, and I was all disappointed. She's like, "I was okay. The the the, the scallops tasted amazing, so I yeah. can't wait to do it at home myself." 
So she's going to add it into our box now after we had the, because it's been a while since I've actually made scallops. Try, try to make up for that, that yeah, night do it of, at, uh, <laughs> yeah, do it at home. Yeah, so, so check this out, right? So they, I, I, I was able to write down some stuff about them just to give people a better idea of, you know, kind of what to expect um, from ButcherBox. So uh, let me pull this up here. They talk about like the different boxes and what you can expect to get out of there. Obviously, grass-fed beef is their most popular thing. But you also have heritage raised pork. Heritage pork is um, uh, tastes mm. better. A lot of people like it. Um, here's the okay. So here are the beef options. There's Shredded ground pork. beef, Good. New York strip steaks, steak tips, chuck uh, chuck roast. There's sirloin steaks, but then you also have things like tri tip, which are quite oftenly you know available. With chicken, there's drumsticks, uh, skinless chicken breasts. Um, they have, uh, with the heritage pork, they have wild-caught, sustainable sourced seafood. And then as far as the boxes are concerned, they have different boxes available. Some are custom and some are not custom. And then you can get them delivered more or less frequently depending on how often. So it's, it's much more customizable yeah. than what a lot of people may think. You can go in there and change things and then get it. I'm really bad basis. at that. Like we tend to like, st I find something that works yeah. what we use and then I just stick I to steak it. steak tips a lot. But then I see one of you guys or Doug like posting something and there you guys are like, oh yeah. You guys got to try pork. the pork, dude. I know, I I'm keep not saying really. it. Oh, yeah, so are no, you I'm... managing that or is that Jessica? No, I just me. Oh, really? Yeah, well, I mean, oh, both of us. You. She'll tell me if she wants something different, but I'll go in there, and the her the heritage pork is... I am not a pork fan at all. I don't like pork from the grocery store. Herit these are like traditional breed porks. The taste is way different. It's better. It's so much more rich no, and is. flavorful no. than traditional pork. Traditional pork tastes like bland to me in dry the, their mm -hmm. heritage pork is not no, like that no, no, it's, it's, it's amazing delicious. yeah so i st so i that's the main thing that i off topic but i wanted to bring it up because it was in my notes to bring it up the other day and i keep forgetting about it <clears throat> you know right I, our forum loves to like you know give me the what, what do you call the finger shoes or whatever They're, oh the five finger shoes yeah the oh, and, yeah okay i you, oh, oh i wonder if you're gonna talk about the one that has like the split just for the big toe have you, yes it? the reebok oh, man. pull this up doug so no, pull ninja, up, i did see that ninja up, shoes bro look how ugly this like, shit why? is pull up pull up reebok you know split toe or big toe if you go reebok big toe shoe it'll pop it's up. like a ninja sh shoe Mm -hmm. A ninja shoe? Yeah, so you have like a little camel toe <laughs> on your foot. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Yeah, it's like a Japanese style shoe, yeah. Is that what Japanese it is? In sneakers or no, like the slippers? The, the slippers. Oh, those, yeah, that's the little this socks. Is a sneaker. Now, now, here's the deal it makes sense uh, when you talk about biomechanics and movement. Of course it does. But yeah. it's ugly as fuck. But who the hell buys Nobody shoes is saying, for that? no one's saying it's not functional or it's not good for your toes. Yeah. I'm not saying that. Yeah, yeah. Nobody, everybody your buys big shoes. toe anchors you quite a bit. Everybody movement. buys shoes for looks. Nobody buys it for function. Look at, look uh, how freaking ugly that is. Oh, that's cool. Right, dude. It's a little camel toe on your foot. It is. That's weird. What are you going to do with that? Does that help you climb like bamboo stalks or something? Like, what's the what, what's oh, that? Oh yeah, for? you could wedge like, that in. You, you could know, grab. Like you could grab pick up a pencil with your foot. Sticks and you know. Oh, that's kind of weird, uh -huh. man. I wonder what that would feel like if that's going to feel more comfortable. Well, it or? probably is going to feel like flip flops, but you're wearing shoes. Oh, that's kind of weird, huh? That's exactly like a flip flop. Yeah, and then right? if you're run, like, what kind of like um, friction are you going to get there in between your big toe? Like, I would imagine oh, you get good. like, like a callus yeah, inside. Cal yeah, it's some kind of blister. It's, Okay, so you know what the challenge with some of this stuff is? If your feet have always been in traditional shoes, that your big toe is probably pressed up against your other toes pretty well. That separation all at once, walking around all the time and doing stuff all the time, I wonder if people are going to get pain. Well, Because you can't just go from what you did before. I mean, I think this is a good thing, right? I know I'm, I'm bringing it up and I'm trashing it, but I think that the awareness around... So even as a trainer... They're 300 bucks. Is that what that says, Doug? No. Look at no the way. price of these shoes. No, dude. I mean way. that one is, but then you have the other one. Two ninety three. Are you serious? Yes, two ninety three. What does it come with? Uh, An extra toe? a shoe and laces. That's it. As far as I know, I don't. I didn't now even, Adam wants to get one now. Hell no. It's hell no. <laughs> it's not how my taste works. But I'm just doing expensive. <laughs> hell no. I mean, it's a, okay. So you know, it's it's actually in uh, the CrossFit community is getting real big on the 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 toe spreaders now. Yeah. Like we were asked, someone asked that in the forum, and I kind of went down the yeah. rabbit hole of like okay. I don't follow a lot of CrossFit people, so mm -hmm. I started looking some people up, and they're At everyone. Night they'll wear them. Or yeah, yeah. Really so, that's, so I mean, I'm not. Uh, I, I think that's a good thing. Adam's I think, like, if you do that behind closed doors, nobody sees you. Good. <laughs> don't wear that shit outside. Well, I mean, no. My thing is just go barefoot. I mean, just go barefoot. Work out. You know, a couple times a week barefoot. I think that I think you're going to get just as much, if not more, benefit from doing that yeah wearing. i mean i like the minimal soul like i like having like um you know like less less is more with that but not like the split toe thing 
That's weird, man. Yeah. It's ugly. Yeah. I almost want to try them on, though, just to see what they... Of Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. How the hell are you going to wear those with socks? I have no I just idea. thought of that right now. Yeah. You got to get special you socks? You got to get those Japanese socks. You oh, do, you're huh? right. You'd have to... I didn't, why didn't I... Don't so what? Either. You got to get the seam that goes all the way back, you know, to the... Yeah, dude. You'd have to get special socks with that, because that's going to feel to weird. To the crease of your toe. Unless yeah. you're one of those weirdos that wears flip-flops with socks, like uh, me sometimes. No, don't Go do outside that, that way. That's in style again. No, it's not, bro. Yes, it is. Flip flops with socks. That was out, that was in style when we were kids. So when and when we were in high school, okay, it's like not a good look. A, a common all athletes. You guys didn't wear socks with dude. Flip, wait, hold on a second. Wait, wait. I'm I talking mean, about the toe. Flip flops. No, I, I would take no, my socks off. No, no, no. Uh, so when we were in high school, you're talking about this. Not flip. You're talking about the with the unless full, you're transitioning every to, every to basketball, basketball shoes. every basketball yes. player wore on on either game day or days where we were going to play ball that day. You wore Nike flip flops with two pairs of Nike socks, tall, like almost all the way up to your knees, in flip flops. Yeah, and but you, I wore the ones that had the the that's, slippers. Not, yeah, yeah, that's not, what I'm talking about. Oh, like I'm talking about wearing the flip flops where it goes in between your toe with socks. Well, yeah, that's really sick. That's, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's and, what I do when I go outside and take out the garbage. <laughs> I, I don't put my shoes. That, on. that and like the Jesus sandals, you know, the one with like I, the, did, I, the I bought my first socks pair of with the Jesus socks. sandals. Wait, you bought Birkenstocks? I did. Why? I did. <laughs> yeah, I did. Why? You they, get did, Crocs they, next? they did a uh, they did a collaboration with Kith, and I love I love Kith, and they did it's a. Are you wait hold on? Are yeah, you yeah, saying Kith like Mike Tyson? K I T H. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> look up, Doug. Look up. <laughs> what's your favorite? What's your look favorite? Up, rock now, hold on a second. I'm Kith, gonna give you a Kith. This. Yeah, <laughs> Kith. Would you look up Kith, please, Doug? Uh, <laughs> Kith and Birkenstock collab. So Kith Birkenstocks, they're furry too. They're so comfortable. Wait a minute. Yeah. Not only do you wear Birkenstock, you wear furry ones. Nice furry Kith. And you're saying kiss, but I actually wear them for the. I I I bought them solely for the purpose of what you just said. I and so I'm what I do. I'm really bad about this. Is I keep a pair of sneakers or two at the by my door, and then I smash them because I just want to slide to take the trash out or go move the car real quick. Or socks like that. I had no idea. We can't see anything, Doug. I think the computer. Oh, there we go. Here we go. Uh, So Kith K I. Oh. Uh, did you do you, did you do Kith and Birkenstocks? Well, it says Kith at the top here. So do they have more than one collaboration? Oh, yeah, that's not, so Kith and Birkenstocks. Those are just Birkenstocks. Well, Jesus okay, Christ, Kith bro. for it Birkenstocks. Look there right. they are, right there. Hello. Which one? One, two, three, four, five over. This one right here? Nope. Yeah, right there. Yes. This one right here. Those Wait a minute. I gotta see you in these, bro. Yeah, yeah. These are the that? ones. Yes. Those are them. In the middle? Yeah. With the big buckles? Yep. Bro. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Look, looking like Moses. Well, Adam finally doesn't care. This is that great. is uh, yeah. uh that was those are my first those are my first pair of Birkenstocks. Oh, those, are, Birkenstocks. those are for women, by the way. But uh, oh, <clears throat> oh, he, oh, those he doesn't care. Yeah, <laughs> he paints his toenails. It's fine. Yeah, I don't like the ones that are like that. So yeah, Did I tell you guys yesterday. I was uh, uh, you guys, you ever lose your temper in front of your kids and then you just feel like an ass, not towards them, but they just see you blow a gasket and you're like, oh man, this uh, happened yesterday. I was driving yeah. with the kids. I'm just in a hurry. The, the nail or whatever. I'm you... trying to get my daughter home real quick because then she's got a game and then we got that call and I got to fucking manage all the shit. And I'm driving it here. Boom! I'm like, oh, hell no. Then I see the, the gauge on my tire start to go down with the air. I'm like, did I just fucking blow a tire? Dude. I had to pull over and I'm like pissed. And I'm yelling and my kids are hella quiet. Well, anyway, after I got everything taken care of and fixed and they got to buy expensive ass tires, the whole Your thing. Your daughter say something? Yeah, she's oh, like, man, yeah. you got really mad yet. And I'm like, damn, dude, I hate that. I hate it when my kids see me lose my shit over stupid, well, what? inconsequential stuff. What was that? It looked- Big piece of metal. I don't know. Oh, you don't even know. Is this kind off of, the highway or like a on side the road? road. Yeah. On the road, and and it, it wasn't repairable because oh, it was God, a big no. ass it hole. Was a, it yeah. looked huge, a big ass not hole, like a dude. nail or a screw. So pissed off, and then how, I went. How much to, that tire cost for that car? I don't even want to talk about. It. <laughs> I went to. I went to. I do uh, what? Tell me. That's the more than two hundred. What I had to get all the tires, not just one. What do you mean? So because they all match the tread? They all have to match. Oh, my God. And, because uh, and your front and back uh, are different. The front and back are different sizes. Shut your face. And they're high performance. How much, they're hella bro? Come on, wide, come on. Bro. How much? How, much? how it, much? It was enough. It was a lot, It was bro. enough, bro. Dude. Did you hit a 1,000? It was way more than that, bro. Oh. Oh. No hey, wonder you're mad. Hey, welcome to having a nice car, bro. Oh, wow. <laughs> hey, Yikes. it's a write-off, isn't it? Wow, dude. <laughs> wow. How annoying. Annoying yeah. to say the least. Uh, but yeah, I go to Wheelworks and the guy's like, oh, I don't know if we have these. I'm like, what, do you fu- what am I supposed to do if you don't have these? Like, just let the car sit here forever? He's like, let me see what I can do. And yeah. luckily they located a pair that, you know, or whatever, a whole set that fit. And we do the whole thing. But You got to uh, fly it in from the Himalayas. So yeah. annoying. Of dude. course something so, like that happened to you so already annoying. on that. <laughs> hey, look, one of the challenges with eating to build muscle is digestion. So you're eating more protein, maybe more carbohydrates, maybe even more fats. And you're finding you're a little bloated 
or you get gas or you start to lose your appetite really quickly. Well, one way to remedy this is by trying digestive enzymes. Digestive enzymes help break down proteins and carbohydrates and get them to the target tissues faster. They help with your digestion. Now, you don't want just any digestive enzymes. You want digestive enzymes designed for people like you, people interested in strength, muscle, metabolism boosting, and fitness. Our favorite company is BioOptimizers. They have a product called Masszymes. That's the one that I use, and it helps me with my digestion. Now, if you're interested in checking them out, head over to mindpumppartners.com, click on BioOptimizers, use the code MINDPUMP10, MINDPUMP10, and you'll get 10% off their product. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Wade from Michigan. Wade, what's happening? How can we help you? I was actually, um, first of all, I want to appreciate, uh, I want to tell you that I appreciate all your insight and everything in your, your podcast. It's been really very informative for me. And uh, I I don't know, can't say enough about you guys. You're, you're fantastic. Um, Thank you. I was um, actually inquiring about myostatin inhibitors. Um I'm curious about there. I know I've done some research on them and uh, I know that there are, or there's one in particular that has kind of drawn some interest with people. It's called YK11. And um, I don't know a lot about myostatin. I know the antagonist is folostatin in your body. And, it, and basically if you have lower myostatin then you're able to produce larger muscle mass. Um, can you guys share any insight on that? Paul? So you, you want to look like one of those whippet dogs yeah. is what you're saying. Totally. Like yeah, Flex boy. Wheeler. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So here's what's interesting about, well, first off, this is a wonderful example of the, the, what the supplement industry likes to do when science comes out. So years ago, there was kind of this uh, discovery that if you, if you inhibit myostatin and they did this pharmaceutically, or they did this genetically with animals, you mm -hmm. would get this kind of runaway muscle growth. And there were these really dramatic pictures of mice, you know, that were, that had their myostatin inhibited or cows or dogs. And it was like, it was like a, a, a bodybuilder's wet dream. I mean, it made steroids, it made steroids look like vitamin C in terms of just how. Absolutely. It's almost like the Holy Grail, you know, it's, it kind of seems that way. It's crazy. Now here's the problem. The problem is the supplement industry saw this research and they quickly went into how can we market supplements that will promise to do the same thing so far. Okay, now here's the truth. Creatine inhibits myostatin to a degree. Leucine, the mm -hmm. amino acid leucine, can inhibit it to a degree. Uh, to mm -hmm. a degree, resistance training will inhibit myostatin to a degree. Anything that helps promote muscle growth uh, will inhibit myostatin to a degree. Is there anything out there legally available um, that will inhibit myostatin anywhere near the neighborhood of what the studies done on animals, you know, showed? No, there's nothing that comes even close to that. Now you just referred to a a uh, selective androgen receptor modulator, like a research chemical. Correct, yep. Um And it really, it's, you know, uh, it's, its inhibition of myostatin is similar to what you'd find by taking anything that activates the androgen receptor, like testosterone or an anabolic steroid. I, <laughs> my, my firm belief around SARMs is they're not researched uh, very much. They're not mm -hmm. approved for human consumption. We don't right. know what they do long term. And if you're going to go that route, if you're going to use something that's not approved for human use, and I'm not recommending you do this either, but if that's the direction you go, you're much better off getting yourself some anabolic steroids or yeah. testosterone because they've been around forever. We know what they do. We know what they don't do. SARMs, we're still kind of up in the air. And I have yet to see any SARM that even comes close uh, to what like testosterone would do. Yeah. But, but besides that, it really, there's nothing natural on the market that's going to do it. Uh, like I said, creatine, working out, but there's really nothing you're going to take well, naturally that's going to do anything that's substantial. Didn't we even speculate for a while, like there's a lot of bodybuilders going to Kuwait um, and then coming back just insanely jacked. And uh, we asked Ben Pakulski about yep. this, right? And he he just exclaimed that they had everything dialed in like uh, to a degree where uh, their food was all prepped for them, their sleep was all regimented, their you know pharmaceutical grade testosterone was like one of the best you know around. So it was you know literally they just like stacked everything perfectly uh, in that environment. Yeah, I mean, again, I, I would, I would stay away from um, any, you know, SARM or anything that's really not approved. These are kind of experimental pharmaceutical drugs. Drugs. Some of them that people were using early on now are finding, oh, probably not great for your liver or can cause 
issues with your vision or your or or cancer. So I would stay away from them. And again, if you're going to go that route where you're going to start experimenting with pharmaceuticals, uh, I mean, testosterone and anabolic steroids have been around for decades. We know what they do and what they don't do. You're better, sure. and they're going to give you better results. But I, I don't even recommend. I, obviously, I don't recommend that either. Um, as far as natural well, supplements, yeah. And as far as natural <laughs> supplements are concerned, nothing's gonna nothing's gonna do anything. Wait, wait. Are anything. you are you in our uh, mind pump hormones group by chance? Am I what? We have a. a we actually have a mind pump hormones group. Are you in that by chance? No, I'm not. No. Okay, it's a free group. It's on Facebook. You should totally join it. This is there's great okay. conver- there's great conversation around SARMs and testosterone and all that stuff. Yeah, really smart people in there. Yeah, no, we have two brilliant doctors, uh, hormone doctors in there. So the great and they okay. they actually twice a month go on and do live Q and A's where you could ask them anything you want, and uh, they're they're answering everybody that's in the audience. So super valuable, sure. totally free to you. I would recommend doing that. Uh, and you can also always rest assured that if there's something that that's this groundbreaking that comes out and hits the market, you'll hear it on here probably first. I mean, the I'll, amount. I'll take it. Sal is uh, <laughs> Sal's on every you know uh, deep web uh, black market you know supplement uh, forum that exists, and he's always scouring the internet for what's the latest and greatest and coming out. And he normally, like a guinea pig, will test himself. Yeah. Uh, so we'll definitely <laughs> we'll be on the DNA. front end of anything that comes out, and I promise that we'll let our audience know if, if anything worth trying or taking hits the yeah, market. And, and Wade, this is 100%, right? If a true, effective myostatin inhibitor comes out, like one that really inhibits myostatin, not one that inhibits mm. it kind of like, you know, like on the, like as a side effect, like creatine or whatever, but one that really does an effective job, we will sure. all hear about it because it will be- Oh, absolutely, yeah. It, it, will, it, will, it will make anabolic steroids obsolete. Literally, you'll see- 300 pound uh you know point guards in the in the nba uh, it will be like nothing like we've ever seen before based off of these you know initial animal studies Powerful. by the way there's there's side effect myostatin exists for a reason so it's not like it'd be this panacea where you take it and, oh i build muscle with no side effects um it's probably it's probably going to come along with its own probably issues takes like 20 years off your life maybe <laughs> right That's or your guess. or your heart gets all big too or something like that so yeah. hope that right. helps you Right. Well, I do. I do know that there is one um, when they when they actually tested the mice that there were some issues with their tendons and bones yeah. as well. Yeah. You know, because yeah, your body kind of naturally surprising. regulates itself to the point to where your tendons and bones can actually hold that amount of mass. That's right. That's yeah. Right. And even so. look, at, even with anabolic steroids, you'll see people take high doses and the muscles will grow much faster yes. than the support system. So you'll see tears and, and issues. Um, in, in muscle tears or tendon tears or ligament tears because right. those parts of the body take longer uh, to build and to strengthen. Sure. So, But besides that, there's other side effects, right? There's other things that we start to see down the road. But I mean, te- again, testosterone and anabolics, I mean, testosterone, obviously it's what we already produce. Like some of the old school anabolics that have been around, have been around since the 50s, 60s, you know, like they haven't really come out with any newer ones. In a long time, mm-hmm. and we know what they do and what they don't do largely because they've been around for a long time. These SARMs, I mean, the the one you mentioned, I don't think there's a single human study uh, like so. No, uh, there there isn't. I I did a lot of research on that. There's a there's one other guy that uh, did a podcast on it. It was like 18 minutes long. It was pretty extensive research, but um, there's really no human study at all. No, so. I, I, and 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 you know, just because something you know attaches to the androgen receptor. And we think, oh, cool, it, you know, it's going to activate these anabolic androgenic, re- you know, responses and it's going to take away the, you know, maybe the negatives of testosterone. Like, we don't know. We don't know what they do long term. We don't we don't know yet. So until that, right. until we know, I'm not going to recommend I'm going to tell people stay away. Right. Cool. Absolutely. 100 percent. All right. Awesome. Thanks, Wade. Yeah. Thank Thanks you, for Wade. calling in. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I mean, it's it's fun. We do we're look at all for- this weird, crazy stuff, but. <laughs> Uh, and I get it, like you know, I'm, this is coming from me. Uh, but you know, be careful because you, you don't want. To, and I remember there was one. So I don't remember the name of the SARM. I forgot what it was. But I remember people were write, were writing in the forums. This is when I was reading about them. I mean, years ago when they first came out, and people were like, "Yeah, it's really cool." But after about six weeks, yeah. 
you start I to lose tail. No, no, like you start to lose your <laughs> night vision. At night, it's harder to see. Oh. I'm like, what the hell? What? <laughs> That's not good. Yeah, but I gained five pounds of muscle. Oh, <laughs> oh you, yeah. If you okay. can't see it, who cares? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah no. It's you know, it's uh, SARMs are like super. I mean, they've been popular since we've been talking about it, right? Like I remember when it first came on the scene, but it ain't slowing down. And there's start there's people that have podcasts dedicated to it now, and that's all they talk about, and people hustling them. You know what it reminds me of? Yeah. You know this because you were in the cannabis market. Do you remember how popular synthetic uh, like cannabinoid? You remember uh, like yeah. spice or whatever? Oh yeah. And then kids were overdosing and shit. Like yeah. you can't overdose on on weed. Yeah, they right. turn into zombies. But why? Because it was legal. Oh, no, that was you know, basalt. because SARMs are available online. Yeah. That's why they're popular because they don't even do what testosterone does. They don't even come close. The only reason why people are using them is because they're afraid to go buy black market anabolics. And that's the part that's so funny. I mean, I get it though because I was a uh, I was a young twenty year old kid who was thought the same thing too. Like I was willing to take every experimental thing as long as it wasn't steroids. Yep. Then I could say I didn't. I never touched steroids. I never touched steroids. But it's like I'm trying all this other stuff. <laughs> I just did all the rejects. Yeah, all the uh, all the stuff that's it. as dangerous, may potentially more dangerous and they sell you on the idea that they're not mm -hmm. and so it's like no oh man bro that mentality is why i use like super draw methyl master like all these pro hormones turned out to be designer steroids yeah. <laughs> so it's like yeah. waste of time right our next caller is christian from nebraska christian what's happening how can we help you hey sal adam and justin and doug great to be on the show thank you for taking my question uh, which is when will the MAPS Shake Weight program finally drop? Hey. <laughs> Adam keeps trying to kidding. tell us. He's like, this I movie. created a long time ago. <laughs> His I'm forums are huge because of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, anyways, I'll, I'll try to keep this short. So I'm just going to give you all the information up front and then let it ride from there. So I'm a 28-year-old male, around 160, 165 pounds, 5'9", remain between 8 to 11% body fat. I'm a lifelong lifter. I've always loved lifting weights and doing physically strenuous activities. I currently feel in pretty good shape and, and fairly strong for my size, but I have hit a lifting plateau for the past six to 12 months and have been trying to bulk to put on more muscle. I find myself running into a few issues. So here are my questions. Uh, first is tips for increasing appetite. I'm tracking, tracking and trying to hit 3000 plus calories a day with 160, 180 grams of protein. I'm solid for three to five days in a row, but then my appetite drops off and I essentially do a fast, which basically makes that whole week end up in a maintenance. Mm -hmm. uh, question two, is there any case for purposely slowing down your metabolism to enter a bulk? I currently need to eat 3000 calories to gain muscle. And it would be nice if I could slow down my metabolism and build muscle off of 25 or 2600 calories. But I recognize many people would love to have a metabolism as fast as mine. So maybe that's short sighted of me. Um, question three, I noticed my macros and calories are a lot harder to hit when my protein intake is high. Is there an argument for going lighter on protein during a bulk, maybe 140 to 150 grams for me and increasing my carbs and fat to help give me a better chance of sustaining calorie surplus since I won't feel so satiated? Um, and then lastly, just some additional context. I, I work a demanding job in energy technology sales and provide for my family. Uh, my oldest is a little bit older than Maximus and my youngest is a little younger than Aurelius. So stress levels and sleep could probably be a little bit better. So I'm sure Sal and Adam can testify too. Um, I currently lift in the morning between 5 and 7 a.m. before the, my girls wake up. I've been training intuitively the past six months, but recently started MAPS anabolic in reverse order. Um, and not a question, but if you have any good YouTube videos or resources with tips for making macro tracking less time consuming for busy parents and professionals like me, that would also be really cool. Um, and there, that that's the end. Was okay. that was that Too fast many enough? Questions, dude. Yeah, yeah, no, I, 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 that's I forget. All I right. already forgot. Yeah. No, okay. <laughs> I'll start with the first one. Uh, it's all right. Listen, the eating more at three thousand plus count really hard. I, I, I know mm -hmm. what that feels like. So it's very difficult. The best piece of advice I could give you, aside from, and you're following Maps Anabolics. I was going to say, look at your workout programming, but obviously that's mm -hmm. good. Uh, drink more calories. So try giving yourself a shake in between meals or one before bed. Easy way to get an extra 500 calories. That would be the, the best thing I, I, I think that might help. The second mm -hmm. part about slowing down your metabolism, the short answer is no. Uh, you could lose muscle. That would slow your metabolism down, but that's the opposite of what you want. So <laughs> yeah, you're in, you're in a bit of a, of a tough situation. I guess uh, you, you know you could look forward to the fact that you'll get older and that might slow down your metabolism a little bit. But, <laughs> yeah. uh, but it's, it's, it's a challenging thing when you're dealing with the faster metabolism. I know there's a lot of people listening right now who want to throw their, their shoe at their, yeah. at their 
TV screen because they're, they're dealing with the opposite well, especially issue. Especially when you go to cut, it's like, you know, that's the benefit there. It's like yeah. you're going to have yeah. like that, uh, the grass is greener kind of effect. Yeah. And he, then, did, he did bring up a good potential strategy, though, as far as reducing his protein intake. It sounds like you're probably more like one and a half uh, per, per pound of body weight. Yeah, dropping. that was a third part, right? And yes, there is. Mm-hmm. There's a case. So higher protein is more important when you're when you're in a deficit than it is when you're in a surplus. Right. When you're okay. in a deficit, a higher protein diet is uh, obviously it's more satiating, so it helps with that. But it's also muscle sparing, um, and you know, obviously, one of the issues with dieting is that you you might lose some muscle as your carbohydrates, right. fats, and calories go up. You don't need as much protein, and so in other words, if you let's say, you, what was your body weight? One hundred and what you say? One sixty to one sixty five. Okay, so mm-hmm. one sixty to one sixty five. You could eat a hundred and probably a hundred calorie, a hundred grams of protein, or one hundred and twenty grams of protein. And eat more carbs and fats if those are more palatable, and allow you to eat more calories, and mm-hmm. you'll be you'll be okay. Um, if your calories are low and you're in a mm-hmm. cut, that's when you want to make sure the protein is really high. But you're you don't need to eat a one to one when your calories are that high for the most part. And I, I would bet that you probably start to pack on a little bit of mass if you did what I just said because it'll help you with the caloric intake part because protein really does. Um, hammer the appetite. I want to add to that strategy too. Um, so I, w- this was a big struggle of mine for most of, for sure, my twenties. Uh, mm-hmm. One of the mistakes that I I would make is because I knew that I needed more calories and I was always struggling to get more calories. I'd always like lean towards these like high calorie meals, and a lot of times I was piling on some garbage in there, and then that would actually end up satiating me uh, like for four or five hours at a time. I found mm-hmm. that when I ate on the leaner side earlier that my body would actually, you know, digest the food, process it, and then use it quicker, and then I was ready to eat again. Whereas if I were to eat something that was really heavy or higher calorie, it would end up satiating me for a longer period of time. So actually eating leaner foods earlier in the day and then allowing me to pile on the higher the higher fat, higher protein meals towards the the back half of the day, if that makes sense. That mm-hmm. that helped me a lot by by doing that. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, digestion. I'm glad you said that, Adam. If you're eating foods that you're are making you a little bloated or lethargic, that's gonna that's gonna hurt a lot. So, the more calories I eat, the more I need to pay attention to digestibility. If it's if I'm trying to bulk, I want to eat foods that are really easy to digest because otherwise I'm gonna screw myself as the day goes on. And that's like probably a better way to say that what I said. Yeah, right? it's not so much like quote unquote leaner foods. It's food like rices and like chicken my body can like tear through that if i was yeah. eating rice and you know ground turkey or chicken i felt like i could eat a quick 500 calories and then i was ready to eat in an hour again yeah. whereas if i had like a real heavy you know bacon or steak and something type of breakfast with my eggs mm-hmm. like then i didn't want to eat till noon or one where if i right. ate something on the the lighter side easy easy for me to digest i was ready to eat that next meal again and so that was a, a major strategy that helped me continue to scale my calories yeah, and then, and then with the shakes, like you know, make sure you eat dinner. Let's say by you know, try to eat dinner by six o'clock. Let's say you go to bed at ten. At eight o'clock, I would drink a, a high calorie shake. It's a lot easier to get down, uh, yeah. get a shake down, than to get than to get food down, especially at the end of the day. Um, and that was something I used to do back in the day because it was just a lot easier. So I, I know I understand your challenge. I know a lot of people again are listening are like, screw this guy, but. <laughs> Yeah, it can, it can be really hard when you're trying to put on size and you're just you're burning through it. Well, the other thing that helped a lot, and it sounds like you're already doing it now, but the mistake I was making when I was younger was also training six, seven days a week. You know, my thought process was the more I lift, the yeah. harder I train, the more muscle I was going to build. One of the, mm-hmm. the biggest, you know, uh, summers I ever had as far as packing on muscle was the year that I decided to back way off the amount of training I was doing and scale it back to three days a week, which was scary for me at first. I thought, oh my God, if mm-hmm. I'm going to cut my training in half, I'm going to lose all this muscle. And the opposite was true. In fact, I needed that probably that break from it because my body was yeah. just having a hard time keeping up with all the training and movement. I just It allowed me to not have to eat as many calories to put on mass and size. Plus, gave me ample recovery time. So I was actually building instead of constantly breaking down. So that was another pivotal moment. So if you're just now starting anabolic, hopefully you Mm -hmm. see those benefits too. And I don't know what your training looked like before that. Yeah, I definitely, uh, you know, had that worry when I first uh, went to anabolic the first time I did it, I was kind of nervous about cutting my training in half and doing three foundational days, but I actually responded pretty well to it. I think I was overtraining a bit. So the past few years following maps, uh, anabolic math performance, 
um, Map Strong have really, uh, you know, increased my performance overall. So I love the programming that you guys do. And, and it, it, it sounds counterintuitive, especially for people like me that just like to keep going. But uh, that was probably the best thing for me to, to have those foundational days and then focus on priming and trigger sessions on my off days. So yeah, yeah thank you for that. And yeah. then Sal, you brought up the digestive uh, things. And, and that's something I was thinking about too. And um, I, I was, I just ordered some math time. So I think I'm going to try, try to give that a shot and see if that helps with my digestion. And maybe I will hit 3000 calories and won't feel so won't, won't lose my appetite after three to five days if, if I'm using something like that. So I'm going to give that a try too. Yeah. I, I liked it with the, with the math times I'll do like one as I start eating and then mm -hmm. one halfway through my meal. Um, okay. and I'll notice a difference for sure. Cool. All right. Cool. Thanks awesome. for calling in, man. Yeah. Hey, uh, just real quick. I've been listening to your show for four years because some asshole at the gym I used to go to didn't have headphones and forced everyone in the locker room to listen to your show <laughs> each morning. Hey, who's uh, that asshole? <laughs> that was, that, I like but, it. Yeah, but, but now I'm hooked and grateful for it. So uh, the fitness information is obviously great, but it's also cool to follow along with the parenting stuff since I'm on a similar timeline with Sal and Adam. So uh, your tips and commentary have definitely improved my overall quality of life. And uh, just thank you for everything, guys. Yeah, thank awesome, you, man. You're man. a good man. Appreciate thank you, that. Christian. Yeah. Have a good day. You Bye. Too. Yeah. It's, it's funny when people talk about this, you know, there's like 90% of the audience is like rolling their eyes. Like, oh, <laughs> it's hard for you to gain weight. Oh, that's really, yeah. I used to hate that. Dude, people give you, I mean, listen, the grass is a chore. The grass is always green yeah. on the other side. You know what I'm saying? There's, there's advantages and disadvantages for both sides yep. of this dude. So it's like, I remember when, uh, Pakulski blew my mind with that. I remember we sat down, he's a pro bodybuilder. It was massive back in the day. And I'm like, man, pro bodybuilders have this incredible digestion to be able to eat 10,000 calories a day to get big. He goes, no, it's the opposite. Pro bodybuilders can eat very little and gain lots of muscle. And then, of course, I, of course, yeah. like I blew my mind. Yeah. I'm doing that right now. I'm trying to eat over 3,500 calories a day, and it's it's hard. It sucks. And you know what the, the biggest issue is? If I get to like noon or one and I'm behind the eight ball, forget about it. Yep. It's not going to happen now because now I got to, what am I going to, you know, stuff? Well, that face. was another piece of advice we didn't give him that I always give when I'm talking to a hard day. heavy in the morning. Huh? It's so important to get ahead, to get ahead yep. of what you need because otherwise you're playing catch up and then you're stuffing yourself right before bed, which is not ideal yep. for yeah. sleep. And so that was key. Like I always knew that, you know, depending on where my caloric intake was, I had always set like noontime goals. Like, mm -hmm. okay, my goal is to be at this many calories and this much protein by this time. I knew if I would hit that, that the rest of the day would go well. If I was behind it, a lot of times it'd be fucked. Totally. By the way, if, if you wanted to try the mass signs that he was talking about, you go to mindpumppartners.com and then you click on bio optimizers, mass signs, and then there's a, a discount code there for you. Our next caller is Carlos from Georgia. Carlos, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, how's it going, guys? Um, I just wanted to say thank you. Uh, finding your podcast has helped me kind of put some filters and wait through a lot of the BS that's out there. So thanks. Cool. Uh, right. Yeah, I'm I'm a relatively recent listener. About a year ago, I started. Um, after I started myself, you know, I was a pretty big guy back in 2018. Changed the lifestyle. Lost 75 kilos, more or less. Kilos? That's uh, like 160, 170 pounds. Yeah, uh, yeah, a whole person. Wow, whole person. man! Great Congrats. job, dude. Congratulations, incredible. Thank you, thank you. Um, and I never quite uh, followed a program. I worked for a trainer for a very little time, um, just to get started at the gym because I had never done that. I've never been athletic. Um, so our first few months, I worked with the trainer, and then I kind of took it on my own and just bought aesthetics because um, I wanted to follow a program for the first time, like a real structured, well-done program, not just me going in and saying, okay, I'm going to do deadlifts today, and then I'll try and complement that as best I can. Um, so my main thing is I want to know how to eat because I got great at uh, losing weight, you know, by being in a deficit. Um, I have no idea how to do the reverse, uh, not without, like the last time I tried to do a, even a little bulk, I ended up putting all body fat, zero muscle, and I'll be honest, I'm terrified of being that guy again, you know, being 30% body fat. That's a big insecurity of mine. I deal with it every day. Um, so any tips you can give me to A, get started on that first program with the right foot and B, keep my nutrition doing well. You know, I eat all organic now, keep the trash out, um, eat pretty well. I just want to make sure I keep it consistent when I'm doing a bowl for the first time. Yeah, man. Well, first off, great job, dude. That's a tremendous amount of weight to lose. It's a very, very challenging struggle. I want to comment too on your fear of, of going back to 
you know, how you were before. I, first of all, I understand that, but I do want you to also understand that that fear is going to prevent you from doing what you need to do to continue to move forward. Um, I had a very similar fear of being skinny. And so it prevented me from doing things that um, I could have learned from uh, with my body. I figured it out later on as I got older. I don't have the same fear I had before. So now I can manipulate diet and training in ways that are more beneficial versus what I used to do, which was constant bulk and constant fear of, of losing even a single you know pound on the scale. So consider that, okay? If you want to, you got to revert, in, in order to reverse out of it, first off, you have to have a good workout program and send the right muscle building signal. MAPS aesthetic is good. It's high volume though. And a lot of people jump to that first. And I would say that MAPS anabolic is probably more appropriate for more people. So I'm not saying aesthetic isn't appropriate. It's just a lot of volume. It's a very high volume program. Well, it's also not ideal for what his goal is. Actually, yeah. so, if go, I can give you some context. Could you translate that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hold on one second, Carlos. You're breaking Carlos, up. yeah, we have yes. a, we're, you, you just froze there. Could you re, uh, start from the beginning of what you were say, saying there? Oh, yeah, I lost you guys, too. So I was just saying, for context, I did start the whole journey in 2018. Ever since, though, um, I pretty much became a gym rat. Um, you know, like I said, I don't follow a program, but I do go six days a week. Actually, when I was going through MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Aesthetic, one of the things that attracted me to you guys' program was, hey, this is actually less volume than what I'm doing right now. Because right now I'm spending two and a half, three hours at the gym, and that's Sometimes I'm not even doing cardio, it's just all day weights. So yeah. I, one thing I've learned from listening to y'all is maybe I need to step back, give my body some chance to um, recover, yeah. build some muscle and then come back. And I thought, hey, doing three sessions, heavy sessions, and then in between doing those, you know, focus sessions and being a little easier on my body might be what I need as opposed to. Cause I went off the deep end at some point and yeah. at, at the end, like after I lost all that weight, I got so excited with what I could do now mm -hmm. that I was doing, you know, orange theory fitness in the morning, yoga at night, weights in between. Um, I went way too hard. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I stepped it back, but then I, calm, I caught myself yeah. doing the same thing again, but with all weights now. I was so, like, oh, so Carlos, your intuition is right, bro. Yeah. Your intuition yeah, is right. You. And Sal listen. is even more right with what he said first to you, which is, the thing that's going to keep you from progressing is that exact fear of you're going to go back to being where you were before, and you you need to you're not going to okay, you you've definitely got way better habits. You already have a way better understanding around eating in a caloric deficit and strength training. But there are some things that you need to start moving towards if you really want to break this plateau, and you got to kind of trust the process. And the first step, and the, we're going to send you Maps Anabolic for free. You need to get over to that program, okay? So it, it's even less volume than MAPS Aesthetic, and it's only three days a week of strength training, which should only take you about an hour, and you should be out of that gym. And the reason why this is so important is part of what we need to do with you right now is to build your metabolism up. And that's the reason why you're at this hard plateau right now is you've done an incredible job getting there. And the only real answer to continuing to lose more weight is for from your perspective right now is creating a bigger calorie deficit, which would mean training longer and more and or eating less. And I'm assuming you're probably already pretty low calorie right now. And that's not where we want to be. Someone your size should be able to eat in the mid 2000s comfortably, maybe even higher. Uh, and so that should be our goal right now is to slowly increase calories and get you to a play. And part of what's going to happen as soon as you switch from low cal moving like crazy to moving less and more calories weight's going to come on at first and you got to be okay with a few pounds coming on at first because the long-term goal is that we speed this metabolism up and then come back down the other direction otherwise you're going to get caught in this nasty rut of the the going like crazy just to lose a few pounds and you then you fall off of it then you gain back that way and you keep yo-yoing back and forth yeah, aesthetics might have been a lower amount of volume that we were doing before, but it's still probably too much for what you're trying to do and where you're coming from. So here's the deal. You don't even have to bump your calories yet. Just go do MAPS Anabolic, keep your calories the same. That should start to get things moving. And then slowly, like 50 more calories a day, try that out for a week or get two. Get them in the forum too, And 50 so. more after that, and then do that for a week or two. And then slowly build it up with MAPS Anabolic, and then you'll see your strength gains go up. As your strength gets better, that's, a, that's the best sign 
you could see that you're moving in the right direction. We're going to put you in the forum too, Carlos, because I'd like to follow along with your journey. That way, when you're feeling like afraid or down, you can tag one of us and we can get you back on track. Yeah, okay? because this, we're, this is a major, this is a, uh, I don't know, I would say between the three of us, this is probably one of the most common yeah. clients that we would handle. Like this is very common. Someone that in a, a situation just like yourself, and I know firsthand how hard that mental hurdle is uh, to get Sometimes through. Sometimes it takes years to break that That's right. So hurdle. use that forum. Make sure you tag us. Make sure you talk to us every time you're questioning anything you hear or what you're potentially doing. Allow us to kind of help you work through that because what you need to do is probably going to be really difficult for you right now because of that fear, but we got to get past that if we're really going to help you and get to a place where you can intuitively eat, intuitively train, and feel very satisfied with the calories you're eating and not feel like you're hammering your body six, seven days a week just to maintain where you're at. Gotcha. I understand. All right. All right. All right, Carlos. It's going to be tough, dude, but you're, but you're, you're, you're totally on the right track. We just got to move you in a in a little bit better, more productive um, direction. We got you, buddy. You just hang. Yeah. You just make sure you talk to us in the forum. Yeah, absolutely. Just um, can I recap real quick? So I'll start in anabolics, no problem. Keep calories the same. Maybe go fifty up. What every week, every other week? I would um, go I just go fifty up. Wait and see how your body weight does uh, as it stabilizes and you feel good. Then you can go up another fifty. You can go. You can go as slow as you want. And keep it ten thousand steps or so. That's no fine. No cardio. No. Nope. Nope. That's perfect. All right, perfect. If Thank you, you so much. Hey, but Carlos, you want to throw yoga in there or you want to throw stretching and mobility? Have, I mean, fun, I, have fun with it. I mean, yeah, I kind of have to because I'm getting certified as a teacher, but oh. yeah. <laughs> Good for you, man. Right. Well, there yeah. you go. Yeah, stuff like that is, is totally fine. Okay, cool. Appreciate it, guys, so All much. All right, right, man. We'll see you on the inside. Oh, boy. That, that fear of you know going back to where you were before, that yeah. is a very nasty driver it, it it definitely hammered it, it prevented me from learning a lot for a long time well it, i mean that's the thing you lose all this weight and it took you know so much effort to get there and it's it's like you just get so excited that you get to this place that you want to keep adding 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 i had i had a, a handful of clients like this that it would take yeah. a long time to get them out of that mentality that you know it you didn't have to keep um adding all of these things and all these extra activities to to be able to stave off that um you know that that weight that was the looming in their mind i really hope that he stays in contact with us in the forum because Same. where he's at right now is you talk did you hear we said he orange theory in the morning plus oh, yeah. two hour weight Dude. training routine and then yoga at night yeah, yeah this was, that this that is and i'm we didn't even ask it's if a lot i don't know if he's counted his calories but i can guess that he's probably really low on the calorie yep. intake in order to have lose lost that much weight over the last and year. with all that activity yeah you know uh justin you 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 played at a pretty high level with football is there a difference when you're playing the game to not lose versus playing the game to win? Oh, 100%. Yeah, so when you get stuck in this state of mind, you're not doing it to progress. To prevent defense. You're, yeah, you're doing it just the fear of, of going mm -hmm. back. And boy, does that change the strategy and change your behaviors, you know, and, and in ways that are not beneficial. Our next caller is Alexis from New Jersey. Hey, Alexis, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, guys, how are you? Good. I'm good. I just want to thank you so much for all of the advice you put out, especially helping me, a college student, navigate the fitness world. It's very helpful. Um, so just to start off, um, I am in college. I'm also in Air Force ROTC, which is basically a program that allows university students to commission as officers in the Air Force. And with that, we do have physical training requirements to follow. Um, so the Fitness test is one and a half mile run along with push-ups and sit-ups. And throughout the years, I've been able to follow MAPS, power lift, aesthetic, and now strong while only running like a mile and a half each week to make sure that I can still perform very well on the assessment. But uh, this semester, they're changing the requirements and I will, be, I will have to attend two in-person training sessions, which is... 20 minutes of running, 20 minutes of calisthenics, and um, 20 minutes of like a um, warm up and cool down. So that's twice a week, in addition to working out on my own. And those workouts on my own, I have to run at least a mile um, alone. 
So my main goal though, for this year or the next several years, however long it takes, is to be able to squat 200 pounds beltless for six sets and four reps. And I can currently do that with 155 pounds. And the reason why it's so specific is because I'm currently running map strong the third phase. I've been in it quite a while. So I'm kind of happy with that rep range and that, those amount of sets. So that's why I have that goal so specific. Um, but basically my major question is how would I transition from map strong into a different program while still accounting for these new PT requirements and still being able to achieve my goal of squatting the 200 pounds. Oh, yeah. Is the, the, the PT requirements, did it, let me make sure I got this right. You, it's a, for now on, you're going to have two times a week consistently for an hour that you have to follow their routine, or is this just a test or one time you have to go do that? It's uh, going to be from here on out. Okay. Yeah. You know what? Here, do this, Alexis. Follow Maps Anabolic. Do two foundational workouts a week, and then do the other two workouts are the ones that you're doing with your with your with your group. That you should see some good strength gains transitioning that way. It's less volume, but you're also doing the other workouts with everybody. So in Maps Anabolic, there's an option to do two foundational workouts a week. I would follow that along with what you're doing. And I bet you you would see some strength gains uh, doing that. I see. My main, my other concern is that I don't think that these PT sessions are going to be as intense because they're like made to fit the average like college student, and like I often find them not challenging because I did them in the past, like the optional ones. So I don't know. Like, will that even though I'll significantly decrease the volume and these new exercises aren't really that challenging. Like, will that kind of hinder any progress because I'm so used to training more and like lifting heavier? Maybe, but usually not. Usually the reduction in volume is what people need, but try it out. I would say, try out what I just said. If you don't see some good strength gains within the first three weeks and you feel like, Oh, I'm not doing enough. Try adding a third foundational workout. Yeah, that's a, a perfect way to measure this. Yeah. Start off low. Be be honest with yourself. Be consistently tracking for three weeks, making sure you're you're either staying strong or getting stronger. And if you're not, you can try adding a day. I would just be worried about adding the third day because it doesn't feel like you're being challenged weight wise, but you're still training for an hour. Yeah, right. It's know, a lot of activity that it will accumulate. And I, I would think too, like so, besides those those two days, you have volume, but also you have intensity. So you could gauge, you know, those workouts, you know, in terms of how much intensity you could also then crank up a, a bit uh, to to provide you with you know adequate stimulus. You so, could also you could also do like a Mod like none of the programs are written specifically like this, but here's where I would potentially modify for a client like yours. So maybe you do have those two workout sessions and maybe the intensity is really low and it's pretty easy. Uh, so then maybe one of those days we also practice squats. We don't go really heavy, but since our goal is to get better at the squat and you want to increase it, maybe we have you and I have a technique day. So I'm following MAPS Anabolic to, to a T two days a week. But then if it's one of those weeks where it felt like, oh, those routines were really easy. It didn't feel like it taxed my body at all. Put 65 pounds on the bar That's and practice right. squatting. That's right. Do five sets of you know real light weight and just work on you know your, your feet gripping the floor and your posture and coming out of the hole and just technique stuff. So that will benefit you getting stronger in the squat by itself. So you And just use that based off of how you feel from the other routines. Got it. And should I keep my, I, I listed like the amount of calories and grams of protein that I'm currently eating. Should I change anything diet wise? Uh, I don't see that in the question, but um, how many grams of protein are you eating a day and what's your body weight? So I weigh between 97 and a hundred pounds. Um, and I eat between 90 to 110 grams of protein each day. Well, damn, and you're calories. squatting 150. Yeah, that's good. Wow. <laughs> what is your, that's impressive. You're really strong. What is your, what do your total calories look like? Uh, between it, it depends. Like I would say 1600 to 1800, but usually like in the middle of that. Okay. Pretty, pretty that, good calories. Yeah. That's not bad. I mean, you could try bumping your calories a little bit, um, to see if that helps. Uh, you're pretty lean. Are you, are you trying to get leaner? Or are you okay with that? You just want to get stronger. Yeah, I'm okay with where I am. I'm just like set on that 200 pounds. Oh, dude, mm -hmm. bump, bump your calories a little bit too. Yeah. Throw 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 your cal. See if you can hit like closer to 1800 more consistently 
And in combination with what we just said, that, that should be a nice winning formula for increased strength. Got it. Will do. All right. Well, thanks for calling in, Alexis. And if you don't have maps in a bollock, we'll send that over to you. Oh, yes, I don't. I really appreciate that. Nope. No problem. Awesome. Good, good luck with school, huh? Yep. Thank you so much. No problem. Thanks, guys. Yeah, the uh, it, it's always challenging when you know you're doing so much volume and it's challenging to cut it down because the mentality is always, well, if I do less, that means I'm going to yeah. get less results. Oftentimes, it's the opposite. You do less and you get better results. I know it sounds crazy, but uh, I, I would say eight out of ten times with very consistent people who work out all the time that that's the direction they need to go. Well, when you have a specific goal like this too where you want to get stronger specifically at the squat, there's other things that we can do that's not a full workout too. I mean, she can do things. You can add to those calisthenic days that are that are probably lower to moderate intensity days yeah, for her, mm -hmm. and just practice squatting or doing using prime and working on mobility stuff. If she has any things going on yeah. with that, like there's, we always look at like training as like this, like you know, this 50, 60 minute window of like these intense lifts all the time. But it's like there's a lot of things yep. when when you have goals like this that you can do to complement your training without you know, taxing the body so much. Totally. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any fitness or health goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. You can find me at mindpumpsal and Adam at mindpumpadam. 